Welcome, Sam. Welcome. Welcome, everyone. It's uh, actually great to be back at Maryland. It's a little bit different than uh, several years ago. New building, new facilities, uh, but a lot of uh, similar, uh, similar faces. Um, I want to thank you all for being here today and, and actually sharing your evening, some of your, uh, your actual your dinner uh, tonight. Uh, tonight you're going to really enjoy and appreciate tonight's topic, um, and I trust the information will prove helpful, um, both as, uh, as a new dentist, but also we have some practitioners that are here also. So um, we're going to go ahead and get started. First, I want to give a thank you to the Maryland Dental Society and also the uh, SNDA and that other person that these initials here is, uh, does, it, does anyone recognize those initials, who that person is? Wilhelmina Brown. Yes. <laughs> Wilhelmina Sproul, Gardner Brown. <laughs> <laughs> that's a, that's a, <laughs> that's, a that's another lesson. <laughs> <laughs> All right, but I want to thank uh, Dr. Doolan and the Maryland Dental Society for inviting me and actually coordinating tonight's event. Dr. Morgan for, uh, for listening and, and brainstorming with me on how to get some info to the students. Uh, student Dr. Barnes, where is she? There she is. Hey, thanks again for uh, you and your chapter, SBA chapter, for indicating uh, the fact that tonight's lecture was very important and needed and wanted. And also Ms. Brown, who actually picked me up from the, from the train station we had some laughs before she had to go on to another uh, another event. So we're going to go ahead and get started. Let's see. Okay, good. So I'm going to tell you a little story. I like to start off some of these lectures with uh, an actual story. Uh, so once upon a time, right? So once upon a time, there was this kid from New Jersey that was the only child that loved sports and loved art. He was a state cha champion sprinter that went to uh, college as an architect major and was a member of the men's track and field team. After graduating from uh, college, he worked in D.C., not too far along, not too far away, as a project manager in, uh, at several construction companies. But something was missing for him career-wise. Career After attending a family reunion, um, actually in, in Maryland and listening to his favorite uncle speak, he discovered his calling. A family-owned business was on the horizon. His family was in the oral health and smile makeover business, so dentistry was the new career path. He attended dental school, becoming a second generation uh, dentist, and after school, he did, his post, uh, put, did a postgraduate residency. He became a commission officer in the Air Force, attained the rank of captain and the title of advanced clinical dentist. After uh, serving in both Las Vegas, Korea, and also at the Pentagon, he, he uh, finished his military commitment and moved to Houston, Texas. He became an associate, uh, an associate in his practice and was mentored by an owner who was running a practice that was uh, grossing over 300 million, uh, sorry, $3 million a year in dental revenue. I say $300 million. That's a lot of money. We're going right now. We all need jobs, right? So um, after acquiring a lot of knowledge and experience about the business side of dentistry, he left Houston and went to LA and opened up uh, his first office in Burbank, California. Right, right down the street from the heartbeat of the entertainment mecca of the country. He served as the personal dentist and oral health consultant to many celebrity clients, both in TV and music. But as an only child, he was responsible for having to handle a family situation back on the East Coast where he was from. So he left LA, returned to New Jersey to practice with his favorite uncle, and uh, also during that time, he served as a lead dentist in the corporate dental model. Then, one day, he got a call from a colleague that also served as a mentor about 15 years prior to that. That colleague was the chairman of the dental department at a hospital in New York. 
the chairman had contacted that kid from New Jersey about a, about a, a job and an opportunity that he had at his hospital. So today, that same kid from New Jersey that was an architect that became a, a, a military dental officer, uh, also became a practice owner, uh, and also became the program director for the largest, second largest GPR practice, uh, residency practice in uh, North America. So, you're probably wondering who is that person, right, maybe? <laughs> you. Huh? You. It's me. <laughs> <laughs> it's me. So as Dr. Doolin and student Dr. Clark mentioned, currently I'm the program director at Bronx Lebanon in, in, uh, in the Bronx. Uh, that's where you did what? I did my GPR four years ago. Yeah, see? See, you bring it back home, right? <laughs> not quite. No, not quite. <laughs> About three hours away, right? <laughs> currently I'm also serving as secretary of, on the Council of Hospitals and Events uh, Education Programs with ADEA. I've uh, been co-chairing the New Dentist Conference the last two years which for the uh, for the NDA. Just got appointed to be uh, a CODA site of it, visitor. Uh, and this is something I'm sure Dr. Morgan is familiar with. It deals with accrediting uh, not only dental schools but for residency programs also, which is going to be very helpful as we go through our accreditation coming up uh, next year. I've uh, been called the new dentist coach and currently we just uh, just established a new dental speakers network uh, in the last year or so. So this is this is me, this is part of my story and, and how I got in front of you today. Alright? So for the next, how much time do we have, Dr. Peter? I know the food is settling in. 45 minutes? 45 minutes. Would that do it? Okay. So for the next 44 minutes, <laughs> uh, I want to share with you all uh, a major dilemma facing new dentists today and a strategy that is supported by several reasons that we're going to go over tonight, which indicate why this action step, this strategy should be done. All right. Before we get started, I also just want to uh, give a brief disclosure: not paid or sponsored by any dental manufacturing company or organization. The viewpoints uh, that you hear tonight are mine. Mine meaning my perspective from uh, being a post grad uh, program director that mentors. We have 34 residents, and we mentor them daily for uh, over a year, you know, usually for a year. Also, as a viewpoint for me, being a, a previous dental student, like a lot of you here, uh, being uh, in this institution, being in this culture, um, also being a, a, a previous full-time owner of a practice, a dental practice. So, one of the things that I also want us to keep in mind is that this presentation content is, again, originated from my own experiences, collaborations, and trainings. And again, the, the purpose really is for, my purpose is to help, okay? And one of the things that I, can, I want you all to help me with is uh, giving me some, some feedback as part of the presentation. All right, so, hey, how are you? Good, so I'm gonna pass out some of the uh, Requirements for tonight's lecture, Dr. Johnson, you have to participate. So, so some of the rules for tonight, for this evening, is feedback. Uh, definitely want to get your feedback. Want to know a little bit more about what you thought was good about tonight's lecture, uh, and also for the students, things and topics that you may want to hear in the future, okay? Also, uh, tonight, what we're gonna be doing is uh, doing some giveaways, all right? Gonna be doing some giveaways. One of the first giveaways is I'm gonna be uh, giving everyone in the room a, a free report. Uh, it's called the seven, Way, seven Mistakes Made by a New Dentist. Seven Mistakes Made by a New Dentist. And then also, uh, we're gonna, by filling out the, the uh, the surveys and the presentation feedbacks. Uh, we're also going to be giving away a $25 gift card. So for all the all the students that are like me that like Starbucks, <laughs> I'm sure that would be handy. All right. If you if you guys could, I, there's an email address on the actual form. But if you could, the way I want the way we're going to do the the drawing and the free report is I want you all to go to this this website if you would please. 
and just enter your name, uh, your cell number, and your email, so that way we can send and have the actual report uh, sent to you. And then at the same time, those are the names of the people that we're going to be drawing from for the uh, $25 uh, gift card. Okay? All right, has everyone got that? Mm -hmm. All right, for those that want to participate, which hopefully it's everybody. All right. Uh, second rule, um, participation. I want to make sure everyone has the opportunity to participate and be part of uh, the lecture. So one of the things that we're going to do right now, I need 10 people to put their hand up. 10 people, 10 people, 10 people. I'll give you one. Who else? Keep your hand up. Is that six or nine? No. Nope. <laughs> 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 All right, I got three, four more hands. I don't know. <laughs> Maybe because it has more space in the here. Yeah, I'm feeling this. Six would be. Okay. Either way, we don't. Yeah, just keep your hand up. All right, so these are numbers of. I have a question. Uh, yes. Is this a nine or a six? Let's see. That's a nine. A nine? That's okay. a nine. So, for those of you that put your hands up and that uh, actually have a piece of paper, um, what that is, is when you see your number, well, one of the nine rules, if you see your number, what I want you all to do is just stand up, or if you don't feel like standing up at least, uh, just state your name, and uh, that's how we're going to interact. So, when you see your name, I'm sorry, when you see your uh, number, on the uh, screen, just uh, stand up and actually state your name so that we can uh, move to the next item. All right, so those are the rules. <laughs> Any questions? Yes? Can you please see the website? You sure can. It's <laughs> good, you want that gift card, huh? <laughs> Got it? Okay. So the objectives and purposes of tonight. So one of the objectives is to discuss and to identify the nine reasons why post-grad residency training is not optional. Uh, you are also going to be learning about how post-grad training impacts and influences your professional development and your success. Uh, discover ways where you can boost your credentials and uniqueness as a special, uh, specialty candidate. There's probably some people in the room in the room that are interested in uh, specialty programs. Uh, also, the purpose is to produce a call to action and make you guys think about deciding, all right? Think about deciding and helping you, giving you some information that's gonna help you uh, decide. And then also, also the purpose is to be a resource and help uh, for those of you that that are thinking about residency training, okay? So who, who knows this person? Usain Bolt. Usain Bolt? Yeah? Usain St. Leo Bolt. St. Leo Bolt. That means you're from Jamaica or something, right? <laughs> yeah, it's a possibility. It's a possibility? But who's this guy? That's you. That's Dr. Hayes Bolt. <laughs> See, that's, that's me back in the day at, at uh, Virginia when I used to run track. Before there was a Hussein Bolt. Well, there was Michael Johnson. It was Michael Johnson. Maybe a little bit, maybe a little bit before then. Maybe around the same time. But that's just uh, me back in the day. I, I think actually, I can actually beat Hussein. I don't know. Uh, that's another story. All right, so we're going to get started. So number one, who has number one? Uh-oh, I knew it was going to be you. We, I met her earlier, and she was explaining and tutoring me on her name, so <laughs> I'm glad you get to say it before I do. So what's your name again? My name is Adesla. I'm Hi. <laughs> so what do you think? What, what, what do the, these two numbers have in, in common? What do you think? What do those two numbers have in common? Eight patients a day. Okay. Feel free, anyone feel free to, to, to chime in also. They're even numbers. They're even numbers. <laughs> yeah, they are even numbers. What's the what's the average cost of dental school here in Maryland now? Five hundred, three hundred. 
If you're in state. So he's saying eight years in school. Eight years. Eight years. Mm-hmm. Seventy a year. Four years. Ago. So like two eighty. That does that include? That doesn't include um, living cost of living. Yeah, by seven. Yeah, that's what it is. So, he's got it. He's got it. What is it? It's eight. Four years undergrad. Eight years of dental. And that's what your average. The star is because it can go up and down. Would you say say it again? Oh, sorry. <laughs> four years of undergrad. Yeah. Four years of dental. Yeah. And then the star is because it can go up and down. Because it depends on where you go to dental school. Depends on how you're classified in state versus out of state. So you're right. Private. Eight years of, of school and a price tag of about three hundred thousand dollars, right? Those are those that's the correlation between those two numbers. But even if you didn't know it, it's okay because it doesn't matter. Alright? Those two numbers, what the correlation is, it really doesn't matter. Because after dental school and after eight years, guess what? It's still not enough. You all, as, as new dentists, are still going to need more time and more money to continue what we do here in dentistry, which is lifelong learning. All right? So learning. Learning is never cumulative. It's a movement of knowing which has no beginning or no end. No beginning or no end. So you all are going to be continuing continuing your education and spending time to do it. I, I guarantee if you were to ask any of the um, non-dental students that are here that have been practicing over five or six years, and if you were to ask them if they uh, are still spending time and st- still spending money, uh, whether it be with uh, for continuing education, I bet you my paycheck that most of them would have their hand up, right? I see some nods. So it's just what we do as, as dentists is continuing to learn and spending time and investing in that in that uh, in that learning process. So number two, who has number two? All right, you gotta state your name. I didn't meet you earlier. Marla E. Yes. Marla E. 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 Ye. 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 Hey, Marla E. Ye. <laughs> How are you? What year are you? Third year, okay. Perfect, perfect. So, I'm going to ask you a question. This is, you, you get the top question. You get the top question. So, what is a documented cause of root canals failing to heal? I know you're like, I left all that stuff in second year. I'm not supposed to be doing this. <laughs> what the heck? What the heck? So, can anyone help her? What are some causes of, some documented causes of? Failure to heal. Non placement of a permanent restoration. Let's do it, Dr. Cross. What else? Um, I think it's under instrumentation, so you're not within the millimeter of the apex. Under instrumentation? Dr. Cross. Huh? Periodontal conditions. Periodontal conditions? Yep. I yep. Antrogenic. I, what is it? I antrogenic. I antrogenic. Yep. Infection. So let me, let me read to you something. Um, that this question and the information was given to me by a colleague of mine, who's a board, excuse me, a board certified uh, endodontist. This is a, so cellulose, cellulose fibers present in paper points may dislodge, may be dislodged and pushed into the periradicular tissues, causing a persistence of a periradicular lesion. This component of the plant cell wall is not digest by man nor by the body's defense cells. Thus, the cellulose remains a long time and can induce what, what is called a foreign body giant cell response or even sustain the lesion. So all of that from possibly from paper points. All right. Also, the paper points can carry microorganisms into the internal part of the root canal and also into the peri 